everyone. My name is Carrie Butler. I am currently the resident makeup artist for Bay City Players Theater. And today I just want to go over a couple of things, safety measures, um, styles of makeup, expiration dates, and just some tips and tricks for you when you are applying your own makeup at the theater for a production. So before we get started, um, I just want to uh, let you guys know that I have all my stuff preset up right here. Um, ready to go. It's, it's kind of out of your, your sight line, but that's a big thing um, just for sanity purposes is um, lay everything out before you get started. Everything you know you're going to need um, to apply your makeup or your special effects. So with that being said, um, one of the first things and, and probably the most important is um, for a nice even blend of your makeup, you want to make sure that you are putting all of the oil, pulling all of the oil, all of the dirt, anything that might be on your face that's accumulated throughout the day. Um, you can simply use something like a baby wipe to do that, um, where you would just start up at the top and pull down and wash down. That way it gets all the oil, the grease, um, everything off your face, dirt that may have accumulated throughout the day. And you want to make sure that you go down and onto your neck and underneath um, because that's the blending spot for your makeup. You're going to blend your makeup from your face down into the natural color of your neck. So you want to make sure that that is also dry and free of oil and dirt and a clear canvas. Okay? So you've done that with your baby wipe, toss that away. Not going to use that again, right? Okay. So fresh canvas, clean face, ready to start. Make sure your hair, if you have long hair, your hair is pulled back. Um, there's nothing worse than trying to apply makeup and then realizing like, oh, I got hair in my face or da 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 da. Sometimes that's really hard, especially when um, your hair may have already been done for the production, but you wanna make sure that you pull that back. You also wanna make sure that your neck is exposed and so that you aren't getting it on clothing. Now, um, it is always smart to be dressed into your costume top at least before you start your makeup, um, or if it's a top that's easy to put on, like let's say it's a button pullover or a sweater pullover, um, and it's not something that has to go over your head, um, then I recommend something as simple as like a tank top. Um, that way your neck is exposed um, for easy blending, and you can pull your, or you can take your carnigan and pull it over top or, or whatever it may be. Um, as long as it doesn't have to go over your face and over your makeup, okay? So, now you're all set to go. Your hair is back, your face is clean, you um, have an open neckline to do your blending. You can go ahead and get started. You want to start with a cold cream, okay? A cold cream before you start is very, very important for the simple fact that you've pulled that oil and everything off your face, your face is now being allowed to breathe. The makeup that you're going to put on is a grease-based makeup, um, so it's very clogging, it's very suffocating to the face. Um, this cold cream is going to allow your skin to stay moisturized and breathe and not get so like dried out from that grease-based makeup, okay? So it's a real simple prep, like you don't need a lot, it goes very, very far, like a finger full, okay? And it's a dab, 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 and then both cheekbones. Okay, and then you're going to just rub that in. Like I said, you don't need a lot. Um, very important that you get it under the pockets of your eyes um, just because that section is very, very delicate. That skin is like tissue paper and it will dry out. Okay, so once you've got your cold cream on, you want to give it a couple of seconds to just set in, set in your skin, dry up a little bit. But another advantage of this, um, doing this, is that you are allowing um, the, the grease based makeup that you put on, you're basically giving it a blending agent. So this is allowing your um, makeup to go on a lot smoother. You won't get the chalkiness, you won't get the lines. So once you have that on, you can go ahead and start with your foundation, okay? Um, and I actually like to start with um, a lighter foundation under my eyes 
And part of the reason is, is because, here's a little trick for you. These black circles under your eyes. See how everybody has these black circles under their eyes? Those black circles, here's a quick tip that you can get rid of those. So this is a Ben Nye lip stain, a red lip stain. I just do three or four dabs, so it's very light on my fingertip. And then it's just a dot, 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 dot. And with the lighter skin tone foundation, I use as a blending agent. So blend that in. What that red lipstick does is it takes, it dullifies the blue that is under your eye, eyes in those pockets, okay? So now you can take your makeup sponge and you want to dab this, dab blend this in. For the simple fact that, like I said, that skin is super delicate underneath and we want to make sure that we're not tearing it and creating blood vessels and breaking them, okay? So it might not look like much now, but when you put your darker foundation on, you've basically given a shield for that color, for that dark circles. So then once you have your dark circles in place, you're gonna take your Ben Nye foundation. Um, great way to foundation test is take your palette, the color you think that matches your skin the best, use the back of your sponge, and go on your wrist. If it blends into your wrist and the rest of your skin tone, you know you have a perfect match. If it's a little bit darker than like your your skin, your arm, forearm skin tone here, then that means it's not going to match your, your face skin, okay? This skin that is on your forearm and the back of your wrist is the closest tone to your, nat to your natural face tone. So that is where you want to test your makeup. So as you can see, this is really a perfect blend for my skin um, off the back of my wrist. So now I'm gonna go ahead and get started. So you take it, you go two or three times around, just enough so you have enough on the sponge, and you start from the top. And you wanna start from the top and blending into your hairline so that you don't get any line creases or anything um, chalky, and you can re fill your sponge as much as you need, okay? So you're just gonna go ahead, fill in. When you get to the socket, you're gonna dab. You wanna make sure you're dabbing your eye socket so you're not tearing that skin and pulling that skin. But as you can see, and probably start to see, is that, that blue and darkness is starting to fade away. So then you just keep moving down using as much reply makeup as you need. And you notice I popped my lips there so I didn't go over my lips with the makeup. That is because Foundation is one of the hardest things to get off of your lips and you don't want it to delay your, your makeup process any longer. Okay, so don't go over your lips with foundation. Okay, now you've got it on. It's a, it's a rough looking coat, but that's okay. So when you start to blend down this chin line, it's very important that you don't grab any more foundation, okay? What you're doing now is now you're just pulling down what you already have on your face and blending into your neck, okay? And you go just below, probably right before like where your Adam's apple would be, and you should be blended by that point. There should be no need for you to put makeup all the way down your neck. Um, as it will get on collars, it'll get on costumes. Um, it has a tendency to um, create a hard line when you put a lot of makeup down there because where your collar may be rubbing will create that hard line. If you blend it down, you may still get it on your collar, but it won't be as noticeable on your face with a hard line or actually on the costume as well. Okay, so you're gonna blend down 
as you work through. Okay? So once you have that done, you um, always start fresh with a new sponge. So you can throw this one away and you can move on to doing your blush or your eyes. It really kind of depends on what works best for you. If you choose to use your blush first, um, what, and that's what I do, um, what you would do is you would smile, okay? So right here and right here, you see the lines that um, automatically create for you so when you go to do your makeup. So it's kind of like a road map. Um, think of it as a road map for your face when you're doing your makeup. So you smile and then you pull down. And you're going to create that, that line. And that's really all you need. Blow the excess off your brush. And then now you can blend in. Okay? And do a little bit up top, a little bit of your nose and your chin. And that's basically a highlight color just so that that's not the only spot on your face that ends up being red. Okay. Once you have that done with your brush, this is very important. If you are not using your brush again, you want to put it in water. This is water and shampoo. Um, as you can see, there are some brushes in there already, so it's a little crowded. But you want to make sure that you do that so that your makeup is, um, so that your brushes have a longer lifetime, lifespan. Um, this is a shampoo and water combo in here. Um, shampoo is a degreaser. It's a great thing to use on these brushes um, as they will, as it will pull the grease makeup out a lot better than just a normal soap would, okay? So once you have that done, you can actually do a setting spray. And the setting spray, there's a sealer by Ben Nye. Um, Maron has a makeup sealer. Or you can just use any over-the-counter um, CoverGirl Maybelline sealer. This happens to be what's called an all-day, all-nighter, um, just a straight street makeup sealer, but it'll work. Um, and what that does is it helps give your makeup a longer lifespan on stage. So it doesn't um, melt under the hot light, it doesn't sweat off, it's, it's a barrier essentially, okay? So when you apply it, you want to hold it probably a good three or four inches from your face. Just so that you feel your face damp enough. Um, not super wet, but just damp. And what that'll do is that'll protect it. Give it a couple of seconds and let it dry. You can speed that process up by standing in front of a fan or fanning it. Um, it doesn't take very long to dry, but let it dry before you move forward, okay? I do my eyes after my blush because I don't have to worry about um, once the sealer is on trying to apply something else to the face. So then you go to do your eyes. When you do your eyes, it's very important that you are not sharing eye makeup. Um, our face is one of the most accessible spots for bacteria to get in through our eyes, through our nose, through our mouth. So it's um, very, very important that you're not sharing eye pencils just for the fact that you can't ever get them clean enough for someone else to use, okay? When you go to do your eye makeup, one of the best things is, is you're gonna pull your eye tight and you're gonna draw your line right across the ridge, okay? Here's the beauty of theater. It doesn't have to be a perfect line. You're far enough back that if you can't get that perfect line, it's okay. Because the only person that can see you up close is your fellow actor, and I promise you, they don't care. So as you can see, if you pull that skin tight, it allows you to draw at least the straightest line you possibly can, okay? Once you have your line on, then you can go ahead and you can start applying your shadows. And one of the things that's um, really important to know is that you... Um, know what kind of light you're standing in, okay? Know what kind of light you're standing in and um, that will help make your eyes pop. So in this case, if you are out in warm lights, yellows, pinks, sunset, daylight, those kind of things on stage, you wanna use a blue foundation or a blue eyeshadow. Um, what that will do is that will allow your eye to pop. So in this case, I'm using a Revlon um, smoky blue gray kind of like a steel gray 
and you very lightly close your eye and you just go in that little crease all the way up to the crease and then one of the best things to use is one of these brushes that's very short and bristle and very tightly wrapped um, these are a wet and wild brush you can pick them up at the dollar store they're also really nice because if they get ruined you did not spend a ton of money on them okay so that's what you want for your eye is just in that crease right there allow your that blue to get on there and pop and then you want to finish that off with a um, like a, a darker um, like brown or even um, like a tan nothing um, nothing that pulls that entire shadow so I'm going to use this like light pink just to blend it so that I don't completely black the eye out um, it's very very important that you don't wash your eye completely out so that blue being that close and on your eyelid is going to allow your eye to pop but it won't completely swallow the eye now if you were doing um, a night scene like you were in an alleyway and the light was blue dark like you know blue with night blue or purple something along those colors then you would want to do the browns um, you would want to do the tans because what that's going to do in the dark light is it's going to make your eyes pop and in the light light the dark color will make your eyes pop so it's very important that you know your light on stage and what your majority of the time you're going to be in because that's going to help your look transfer from the stage to the audience okay so we have our eyes done our blush is done everything's looking good we want to use or now we want to apply our mascara okay and um mascara is probably the most important thing you should never share okay um a lot of times in theater one of the biggest things that trans transfers through cast members is pink eye okay it's super contagious but one of the, the like probably the number one way is sharing an eye pencil and sharing mascara okay so pull your mascara out of the tube Take the excess off on the ends and then this is where we get to make funny faces so it's like and then just lightly go up and brush up and then when you do your bottom you pull down and it's just a light little brushing okay uh oh looks like we got some on our face well you can brush it off or the actually easiest way to get mascara off your face is let it dry take a q-tip with a little bit of makeup remover and dab 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 flip it over use the dry side and then swipe okay all right so at this point one side of our face is done because I didn't do the other side but that's okay so your face would be done okay um, some of us have really light hair which results in really light eyelash or eyebrows um, and we have to draw them in so um, this is just an elf eyebrow pencil and you can lightly shade in you don't want to press down real hard you just want to lightly shade in the pattern that is already there and what that's going to do is that's going to give you an eyebrow definition on stage okay so just lightly shade it in if you press down too hard you're gonna get a weird line and you don't want that so the nice thing about this pencil is the one side is the pencil the other side is the bristle brush okay so once you have it shaded in now you're just gonna take that and go across allowing it a more natural look but a darker brow okay we're all set we're ready to get on stage we're ready to have a good time one last round of your setting spray got that on we'll let that dry 
And then the next thing you want, and the last thing you want to do is your lip stain. Okay, this is a Ben Nye lip stain. I recommend a lip stain for your makeup, um, especially on stage, because you don't have to reply it probably more than once. Maybe at intermission, sometimes not even then. Lip stain gives a longevity. It also gives a sheen, so you don't require a lip gloss. Um, you can use over-the-counter lipsticks, Maybelline, CoverGirl, Revlon, um, but just keep in mind when you do that, you're going to have to use and reply them probably every couple of scenes. So when you do that, um, this is basically just like painting. You take your stain, you get enough on your brush, and then you apply. Like you're painting. And you paint it on. When you do your blend, continue to paint it on and now you're ready to go. Um, one thing that I like to do is I like to spray just my lips. And what that does is that just gives that a longer lifespan. Okay, so your makeup's on, you're done, you're ready to go. You've done all your tricks, you've hidden your black circles, your show is done, bravo, you've had a wonderful night. Okay, don't ever go to bed with your makeup on your face. Super, super important. We talked about how this is a grease-based makeup, so it really clogs the skin, it clogs the pores, um, it doesn't, it suffocates your skin, essentially. So it's very important that you don't go to bed with this on your face. Um, it's a simple wipe off. You can use baby wipes, you can use makeup wipes, but you are just simply pulling this off your skin so that you are not going to bed with your skin all clogged up. And don't be afraid to use as many wipes as you need. If you use a makeup wipe, it very well may have a moisturizer built in if it does not it is very very important especially because baby wipes have alcohol in them that you use a cold cream after you should always use a cold cream after you take makeup off but very important if you especially if you don't use like a face cleanser or something that has a moisturizer face wipes that have moisturizer built in okay I probably didn't do a super great job getting all that off, but for time purposes, we're going to call that complete. Okay? So you get all that off, you come back, you do your cold cream one more time. Dot, 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 dot. A little bit more right there, and you can rub that in. Just to make sure that your skin's not angry post show. Okay, so we'll get all that in, and then, bravo, you've done your makeup, and you're good to go. So the last thing I just want to talk to you about is we talked about brushes. So when you're done with your brushes and you've used everything, like I said, this is a combination um, shampoo water, um, and what that does is just gives the brushes a um, chance to get all that grease-based makeup out. Let them sit in that for anywhere from five to um, overnight, five hours to overnight, okay? Um, and then once they come out, you're going to rinse them under the sink. So a simple under the sink, and you're going to brush down, okay? And what that does is that continues to pull all the makeup out of the brush to make sure that it's good and clean for the next round. Then you... Um, I have pre-soaked cotton balls here with rubbing alcohol, but you clean your makeup. Um, we talked about getting that bacteria off. This cotton ball is soaked in rubbing alcohol. It's literally dab, 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 Woo. dab, 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 and let it air dry. Okay? And that is going to, one, keep your makeup around longer. Um, it's going to further out the expiration date by maybe a couple of weeks, but still, um, and it's going to keep the bacteria away and keep it healthy and keep you healthier, okay? Same thing with lipstick, just a quick rub down and let that air dry. Things like your powders, your foundations, you want to spray 
with a rubbing alcohol. So probably from like this distance away, um, spray it. Don't saturate it. Um, when powder gets saturated, it gets ruined. So if you spray it from further enough away, it's still getting the alcohol killing content, but it's not ruining the powder, okay? Um, and then the last thing is I just wanna talk about expiration dates and um, ways to tell that your makeup has gone bad, okay? So you should be dating your makeup every single time you buy something um, from the purchase date on. And makeup has a lifespan. So like lipstick has approximately um, 15 to 18 months. Mascara has a six month lifespan. Foundation has about an 18 month lifespan. Um, eye pencils, eyebrow um, powders, blush powders, that's um, approximately 24 month lifespan. And then lipstick pencils and lipstick are um, lip stains are approximately a 12 month lifespan. One of the things you can do to um, prolong the lifespan of your makeup is you can keep it in the make or in the refrigerator. So things like lipstick, mascara, um, lip pencils, eye pencils. If you keep those things in the foundations, if you keep those things in the refrigerator, it's going to give you approximately an additional two weeks. So between cleaning your makeup and keeping it refrigerated, um, you will get approximately an additional month out of your makeup. Okay. Um, get in the habit of smelling your makeup. Makeup has a distinct smell when it's brand new, um, almost like a chemical smell. And once it's gone bad, it's gone. It smells sour. So get in the habit of dating it and smelling it, so you can tell the difference when you get further down the road if your makeup has gone bad. Um, not all makeup will give visual cues, meaning um, lipstick and um, like a like stains and um, foundations, sometimes we'll get a white waxy film on it. If it gets that white waxy film, it means it's starting to go bad or it already has gone bad. Um, mascara will give, and I'm gonna show you here, um, will give you a really chalky and thickness look and you'll be able to tell from that point that it is not um, good anymore, okay? Um, powders, blushes, eyeshadows, they do not have a visual look, so it's very important that you date it or you, you get used to the smell so that you are able to tell. Um, powders build mold in the center, so their powder will start to turn green in the center, but there's no forward visual cue. So um, again, it, very important so you're not putting mold on your face, especially by your eyes um, or your, your mouth or your nose for the simple fact that um, it will you will get sick okay so uh, when mascara comes out of the tube it should come out easy there's you shouldn't have to pull it should be a real easy thing you should be able to see there's no it's not chalky there's not a lot of goop on it oh and it smells like chemicals okay if it comes out <laughs> looking like super super chalky um, you can see on the brush itself there's chalk, it's really goopy. It's kind of hard to pull out because it, and it comes out in large chunks like that. Um, it probably, that's the visual cue that it's probably gone bad. Also, if you smell it, it's super sour smelling. Now mind you, I do not use this one. I um, kept it around for this purpose so that you, I had this to show you guys. Um, when it gets to that point, trash. Toss it, okay? Because we don't want you putting anything on your eyes um, or around your eyes that could um, potentially harm you or make you very, very ill. So with that being said, um, date your makeup. Get used to the smell. Send us, we would love for you to send us comments or videos or pictures um, of you trying some of these techniques and doing your own theatrical makeup. Thanks for watching. Have a great day, everyone, and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.